Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. Happy holidays to you. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, today we're going to go ahead and continue our look at Jaronism and his misrepresentation of facts and misuse of meanings of words. Now, this is a, a series that I started a while ago on seven ways that you can easily tell for yourself that the moon landings really never happened, according to Jaronism. A couple of things that he really emphasizes during this series is, first of all, by telling for yourself, he seems to imply means that you can actually go there and touch a lunar lander. Tell for yourself does not include looking at data that is sent back from lunar orbiters, for example, because you didn't personally ride the lunar orbiter yourself. The other thing is he likes to misdefine words and use them out of context. For example, saying that we went to the moon, apparently to Jaronism means that you and your buddies went to the moon. It doesn't mean that mankind went to the moon, which is the actual context that the word is used in. So let's cue up the music and have a look at his silliness for this week. Uh, lunar rovers have seen what astronauts have seen. Okay, lunar rovers have seen what astronauts have seen. This is the way that you yourself can tell seven easy ways that the moon landings really happen. The same landscapes and scenes captured by the Apollo astronauts have been captured in recent years by the robotic orbiters and rovers we've sent to the moon. Who's we've? <laughs> we've sent to who? You and your buddies? No, sorry, you haven't sent anything to the moon. You haven't sent a damn thing. Japan's Celine Cayuga orbiter, for instance, has been able to snap up images that when put together illustrate the base of the Apennine Mountains, also photographed during Apollo 15. Imagine the ridiculousness of this statement and nonsense. Let's clear this misconception up real quick on the Selene orbiter from the Japanese Space Agency. One of its many missions was topographical mapping of the moon, and what it used to do that was high-resolution cameras that were three-dimensional cameras. They also compared data from sweeps nearby so that they could see an object from above and then they could see the object from both sides as well. And that gave them an idea of the three-dimensional landscape of the lunar surface. So for example, let's have a look at this. This is Shorty Crater as seen by Apollo 17. Let's just go ahead and have a look at the actual photograph from the mission. So there's Shorty Crater. And here is one of the astronauts, the one that took the picture. And there is the lunar rover. Now, you can clearly see these hills in the background. There's actually a number of them. But let's just look at these three hills right here. Okay? Now, let's go out of the photograph. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the topographical map that was generated by Selene. And what we'll do here is just move it. And there are the three hills. So as you can see, what it does is it develops a three-dimensional map of the surface of the moon, which is quite accurate. And as you can see, it matches the photographs. Now, the way I did that was that I went to Google Earth. And under the view on the upper uh, menu bar, you can come down to hit Explore. And if you hit Explore, you'll see Earth, Sky, Mars, and Moon. I selected Moon. And then basically I looked for the Apollo 17 landing site. And when you got to it, there were photographs from Apollo 17. And I went ahead and clicked on those, looked at the original photographs, and then I compared it to the topographical map from Selene. So in other words, I personally verified that photograph based on data from the Selene satellite. So there goes that argument, Jaron. So this is supposedly an image taken from the moon. Okay, you've got the lunar rover here, you've got footprints, you've got this background. So supposedly there's some rover on the moon that was able to take this image, okay? Which, if you look at the mountain, you can kind of see this little peak here, long peak, big peak. We'll go up here, peak, long peak, big peak. You've got uh, this little, little mountain here. Up here we've got this little mountain here. You've got this background mountain here. You've got this background mountain here. You've got this foreground image. You've got this foreground image. You've got this. If you believe that this is a real photograph, oh boy, 
I mean, are you are you are you getting sixteen flu shots a week? That's my question. Stop. Cut them back. Get, you know, take eight flu shots a week, maybe four. You don't need sixteen. Are you drinking fluoridated water by the gallon? Stop it. Please stop. No, Jaron, you you really crack me up. Did you even look at what the Selene mission was? It didn't have a lunar rover. The only time it touched the moon was when it crashed into it after all of its work was done. And uh, this is not a photograph. It's a topographical map. You're looking at a model of what the moon's surface looks like. And you have just confirmed for all of us that the model matches the photographs. Thank you. And as far as the flu shots and the fluorinated water goes, I know that all you're doing is trying to bond with your audience of conspiracy theorists, uh, conspiracy stories that they all find appealing to them. But it really has nothing to do with what we're talking about. So try and stay focused for me, okay? So what? Wh why can't this image, why, why can't this lunar rover go take a picture of the rover that's there? Why can't it just turn around and take a picture of the limb? Why can't it take a picture of the experiments? It can only take a picture of a hill. Look at this photo, folks. Well, Jaron, my mama always taught me to use the right tool for the right job. Don't use a crescent wrench as a hammer, for example, because I used to do stuff like that. If you want to see where the final parking spot for the lunar rover is on Apollo 17, you need to go to something that took a photograph of the Apollo 17 landing site, like the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. And if you do that, there it is, right lower corner. And there's the descent stage and the flag. And you even have uh, you even have some other details in here, which are kind of cool. You've got moon buggy tracks and footprints. It's really quite, uh, quite detailed. And if you look at my video from two weeks ago, you will see that we actually compared this to photographs that were taken as the, uh, as the lunar lander blasted off from the moon. You had detailed close-up pictures of the site, and we compared them to the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter site, and they matched up perfectly. There you go. We confirmed it for ourselves. I'm going to find a still frame which gives me the best combination of size and clarity of the tracks. Taking this screenshot into Photoshop, I'm going to make some minor adjustments to the sharpness and the contrast to bring out some of the track detail. Next, it's time to download a high-resolution LROC image of the Apollo 17 landing site. For any moon landing deniers still losing their grip on reality, notice how these images are hosted by a university and not by NASA. I'm going to download this enormous raw TIFF file which is nearly half a gigabyte in size. Taking this file into Photoshop, zooming into another region of the image, we can clearly see the evidence of the Apollo 17 mission back in 1972. I'm cropping out the region we're interested in and enhancing its contrast. Now that we have both of our images together, we will need to match their scale and orientation in order to see if they are a good match for each other. First, I'm going to get them in the same orientation. I'm using the two mini craters on the rims of the two larger craters near the lunar module as reference points for the rotation. Now we need to measure the distance between the same two landmarks on each image. The left-hand image measures 681 pixels, whilst the right-hand image measures 259 pixels. We can use this information to get the images to have the same scale. After scaling, we can check the reference points on each image to see if the distance is now the same. Perfect! We can now cut and paste one image into the other to find out if the tracks tie up. By lowering the opacity on one of the images and overlaying them, you can see that the tracks are tying up fantastically well. However, the tracks don't tie up perfectly. Why is that? In fact, it's due to the pitch over maneuver that we talked about earlier that puts the astronauts into the right orbit to get back home. They are looking across the landing site rather than directly down on it like the LRO cameras do. Thankfully, we can correct for that distortion by using the perspective correction tools in Photoshop. 
Here's the result of that perspective correction. Allowing for the variation in lighting conditions due to the different position of the sun in each image, it's very clear that these tracks are a perfect match. So once again, using non-NASA sources, we verify for ourselves the Apollo landing sites. Now, if you want to see the details on that photo analysis, go back and look at the uh, landing site video that I did two weeks ago under this Geronism series. So let's go ahead and see what he has to say. I don't know what else to say. Give me a break. It's disgusting. Sad. Embarrassing. You know, all those things. Uh, just to think that, oh, well, there's a rover out there that's driving around, and it took a picture of this mountain, and the same mountain is here. You could just clip this and put it right here. You can't tell by, there's no foreground. Look at this washout. I mean, how hard would this be to fake? It'd be easier than anything I can ever imagine. But again, people want to believe it. Why? I don't know. You know, I agree, Jaron. It is amazing and it is sad that you couldn't do 15 minutes worth of internet research and confirmed all of this stuff for yourself. You know, at least when you quote a, uh, a lunar orbital mission, at least know what the lunar orbital mission did and what its goals were. And don't call something a photograph when it's a map. It's a three-dimensional map. And you can manipulate the map. And you can look at these different sites and match up the background scenery to the Apollo photographs. It's not that difficult to do. You too, Jaron, can confirm the Apollo moon landings for yourself if you just put a little work into it. Just a little. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Happy holidays to everybody. Thank you for making this channel a success during the last year. I mean, it's really been a quite a growing experience for me. And I hope that we've all managed to learn a little something together. I know I have. Hit that little like and subscribe down in the lower right corner. And if you want, have a look at our Patreon. If you want to support the channel, you don't get anything special for it other than the bragging rights that you're on Team Bob.